Hello everybody, I am Angry Bird, back with a new Steel Division League cast of Steel Division 2. We have Kato Megumi dot ZZ versus Sean. So, after you've watched the game, please do let me know how you're finding the audio settings down below in the comments. I am still tinkering with my audio. I'm never going to get it right. Uh, so yeah, please do let me know. But the matchup today, so Kato Megumi dot ZZ on the left hand side playing fifth Panzer uh, on Vanguard Income uh, versus Sean on the right hand side in red playing the 25th Panzer Grenadier on Balanced Income. Obviously, obviously Balanced Income. <laughs> Are we ever going to see Sean on anything but Balanced Income? <laughs> maybe post fate of finland he might stray a little bit but we'll see uh this game was obviously played pre fate of finland um so just just bear bear that in mind wow look at kato megumi does he's he's got no air units whatsoever all of his uh all of his just just nothing nothing in the air tab so he's going to be utterly reliant on the aa pieces which Kinda does show a little bit about why they made some changes to AA in the Fate of Finland patch. Because yeah, <laughs> no air whatsoever from Kato Megumi dot ZZ. So fifth Panzer Panzer, what are we gonna be looking out for? Well, on Vanguard Income against 25th Panzer Gren, and they do have some light light armored vehicles of their own. They have the SDKF Z 250/10s and 250/9s, and they have Panzer IV Hs, Tigers, and then Panther Gs and Tiger Es in in B and C. So, they have a lot of heavy equipment. Panzer Grens, they do get a lot of Pack 40s and Pack 43s, so they can deal with that heavy equipment. But they don't really have heavy tanks. So Kato, I, I think he's got to look at really trying to take out the AT guns of Sean. Making sure that he doesn't have access to those AT guns. Because I think that's going to be Sean's most reliable way of uh, destroying the Tigers and the Panthers that uh, Kato might bring out. Um, we do notice only three Panther Gs. So Kato is more reliant on the Tigers. We've got, what, 12 Tigers in total. Um, but only three Panther Gs. And I think those Panther Gs were probably there um, in his general deck to take out things like IS-2s. Uh, but obviously, Sean doesn't have access to those. In terms of the, the AT tab, Kato does have the Pack 40s in B phase. They will do a you know, along with his tanks as well, will do a fantastic job of dominating the stocks. So it's all going to be down to kind of infantry for the infantry matchup, I think, between Kato and Sean. And then also Kato, you know, trying to get rid of those AT guns and, and ensuring that his tanks can dominate, I would say. Let's have a look at Sean's deck. So he is playing the 25th Panzergrenz. He does have six SPW 233s in A phase. And in terms of in infantry, we'll have more than the um, than Kato, I think. I didn't check the numbers, but I would think that he's got more than Kato. And in terms of Stugs, he does have 15 Stugs in C phase. So he has, a f I think he has exactly the same number of tanks. It's just Stugs versus Tigers and Panthers. Well, you know, the Tigers and Panthers will win. Or should win, really. Um, AT-wise, like I said, uh, the 25th Panzer Grand does have a lot of very good AT. And uh, wow, Sean's chosen to take a C-phase card of pack 40s. Eight of them in C-phase. So he has one pack 40 for every Tiger um, that Kato has in C-phase. And I think those AT guns are going to be pretty key for Sean, you know, to use against Kato Megumi.zz. He does have um, Kato opted for a mortar half track in A and then two off maps, whereas Sean has, you know, he has the mortars in A, but he has a standard field artillery gun with the K532 and the Nebelworth of 42 in B as well. It'd be interesting, will that Nebelworth of 42 attack the tanks of um, 
Kato Megumi.zz because those never were for 40 Tuesday. I think they're 300 millimeter size rockets. They can actually destroy tanks if they get a hit. So it's just you only get six of them per shot, and the dispersion is quite wide. So we'll see how that goes. Ooh, something Sean has as well the ME 410s, two of them in B and four of them in C, and they will do a, a great job of dealing with the tanks there's no air force for for kato to fight off those planes we'll see whether sean picks up on that the fact that kato has no actual air force um so i think if, if sean can take down the anti-air guns that kato might bring in then he's gonna have free reign in the skies well the game is underway we have kato megumi dots zz on the left hand side in blue with an early tiger playing the fifth pentagram on vanguard income uh, looks like he is going fairly heavy into the central town we have sean on the right hand side in red playing the 25th pentagram on balanced income it looks like he is going reasonably decent in that northern side try and put a little bit of pressure on sean obviously kato has the vanguard income so we'll want to strike early sean has balanced income so we'll want to hold the game uh, a little while before making his attacks in c phase that's what i would presume spw 233 taking early strikes onto the mg 42s that have unloaded and uh, kato looks like he's going to easily capture this central town and give himself an extra flag in that regard two spw 233s from sean with the uh the 75 millimeter he guns just striking down at the infantry in the center it looks like he's looking to advance here in the center ground up in the northern side urzat strupens have pushed forwards and uh, do start to take out those Flammenwerfers. Oh, early ME410A1, so he's straight onto the airplay. And Kato's going to have to bring in a uh, some AA immediately. One of the Pac 36s does go down in that central area. Although, I think that was what took out, or one of them took out the SBW233. May have been the... No, the Tiger's out of range. It would have been this pack 36 here that took out that SBW. So, Sean is fairly weak in this central area. Let's see whether Kato decides to continue his push in that center ground. It looks like all of his reinforcements are going into the northern position. Wants to hold off any advance from Sean. And this is what Sean does incredibly well on balanced income. You know, usually a balanced income player, you know, defends at all costs. But Sean actually attacks in a phase on balanced income it's just incredible to watch sean a fantastic player uh you know winner of steel division league season one and certainly showing his skill here picks up two flags in the northern side sean picks up a 13 11 in a phase on balanced income incredible it's all about the use of his initial starting forces i feel because at the very start of the game at zero hour both players have exactly the same amount of points to allocate so sean has you know used his points wisely and invested in this northern area and certainly pushing through this center town could take complete and utter control of this central area shots from the spw 233 is coming all the way over this central lake and uh, pinning down and falling back the panzergrens in this central town in comes an sd kev said 250 10 and a tiger e into the central area 250 slash nines into the northern area pack 36 as well although ooh, will that unload before these spws push through the light forest uh, it could be pretty key i don't think it is it is going to get shot at in that transport no it just does just unload and will be able to start firing actually is that within that's within the heat shell so uh kato could turn off the ap shells there but does get a crew panic and um that will be enough all bailout going down to the 250 slash nine there sean does still have control of this early uh northern position pushing in urzat trooper and just to hold the ground in the center i think he's just going to try and hold this central area he's gonna, gonna let kato hold that flag he doesn't need that flag right now sean has the 13 11 of all things uh, so he's just going to reinforce his position i think and set up for the defense and uh, push forwards again in c phase uh, fantastic watching Sean in action. Kato has the Dornier 217J1. I thought he had no airplane, so oh, the reason for that must be the um, the decks are obviously post Fate of Finland, the match is pre Fate of Finland. So 25th Panzergren, somewhere in their deck, one of their um, 
one of their lines, one of their... Wow, another aircraft. So yeah, somewhere in Keita Megumi's deck, the 25th Panzergrens have been made more expensive, which means that it's automatically knocked off the aircraft uh, from that deck. So he does have airplanes. In come the Focke Wolf 190 G8 and the uh, Dornier 217 J1. I think it's probably to do with maybe the uh, flat billings or something that, that's causing it. Uh, let's have a look at uh, Kato's anti-air tab. It may have been the anti-air tab, tab, maybe not. No, they all look fairly cheap units, don't they? One cost or two cost activation slot units. So yeah, it'd be interesting to know what caused the uh, nerf kind of to the fifth panzer here. But look at Sean, he's pushed through the center with the SBW-233s and the Erzatz Troopin as well. And Kato's not moving in this southern area, and this is what Sean's doing well. You know, Kato's got a lot of units down here in the south. He's on Vanguard income, so he should be pushing Sean as much as possible in A phase, but Sean's managed to collapse Kato's northern flank, so all of Kato's concentration is just going into the north. And Sean will be, like, more than happy with that, because as soon as he gets out of um, A phase, Sean has the income advantage. At the moment, Kato's just pouring reinforcement after reinforcement into this northern area, and he's losing it all. He's lost all his initial reinforcements, apart from this one half track. And um, yeah, this this kind of these kind of trades cannot go on. Sean is in an absolute fantastic position right now, and uh, Kato's going to have to trade incredibly well from this point onwards. I'd like to see him try and somehow pressure Sean in this southern side. You know move his troops down south and at least pick up another flag down here um, and, and, and just continue trying to put some pressure on. It looks like slightly withdrawing the Tiger there. Uh, the MG42s look like they're going to have a little battle between themselves. Okay, so he is now doing that. He is now moving his troops south and trying to put some more pressure onto Sean in this southern area. The Urzats Jupiter are caught out in the open by the SBW 233s more 259s just so many 259s coming in from Kato here down goes another pack 36 um I don't know whether yeah hit by the ME 410 and then it will get followed up by the SBW 233s a hell of a lot of Urzat Strupen coming in I think just to reinforce this town and central position I think Sean's just gonna I'm kind of surprised he's not allocating a couple of these to the buildings up here, but I think this is where he's brought them in, and I think he's now giving orders a lot. Yeah, let's see if we can catch that. He's now giving orders to a couple of them. He's looking to uh, push forwards in this central area, of course. Um, the Tiger's off the road. Surprisingly enough, the Tiger is off the road and uh, not firing down the road, which is kind of uh, odd. Oh, we do have a Pax 38 here, which is just in engagement range. Does take down the SPW there. We do have a Focker Wolf coming in. Oh, I'm kind of surprised that didn't reallocate onto the Pax 38, but we do have two SDKFZ 11 Flax that have brought in the two Flak 38 20 mils. So four, four AA guns there for Sean. And uh, he's starting to really reinforce his southern area. Here we go. Kato has captured the southern side. Now Sean will have to put some units into the south, surely, which will relieve the pressure off the north for Kato. And maybe he can continue pushing forwards. But he has to do something. He's out of, you know, his income advantage is in the early phase. So... He has to put some more pressure on Sean. Down goes another SPW. And there is no more AT up in this very northern side. We do have Pack 38, which is being held... I think that's being held on return fire right now. I mean, it could be on efficient shot, but it's probably on return fire. So Sean manually holding those AT guns and waiting for the right opportunities to attack. We do have a uh, off map up in this northern side. Oh, more AT guns coming in. So yeah, Sean's obviously 
you know, we, we made a point. There was no AT up in this northern side, so Sean has reallocated. Brought in two pack 38s, one into the central area, one into the northern area. Oh, gun jam onto the Tiger E. Gun jam onto the Tiger E, so effective use of that pack 3850 and that will hurt kato nice off map positioning sure might want to pull back his uh, pack 38 that he's literally just put in there but um now comes the panzergrenz as well so kato i think can definitely push forward once again in this northern side more mg 42s coming into the south sean is just going to try and reinforce i think he's really doing he's playing on the fact that kato isn't really pushing hard in that southern side and he's just you know setting up his defense and he's going to be able to hold on at this point it seems he has got these two flags back here i mean just very methodical play these spws have been fantastic uh, workhorses for sean's play in the early stage and Kato you know he has no AT on this Urzatz Truppen and Sean's gonna happily play off that and rush push these SPWs right into the face of those Urzatz Truppen yeah there we go oh in comes an airstrike there we didn't miss that coming in I imagine it was onto the pack 38 Although we have a mortar in now as well from Kato. So Kato is now starting to make some... Oh, down goes the Panzer 4H. The Pack 38, I think that's done all that it needed to do. We do have a, a commandant up in this northern side as well. So three-star Pack 38. That did enough. Just one Panzer 4H kill. It didn't pay itself off, but it certainly took away the armor from this northern side. The Tiger is gun jammed as well, so... Kato now is going to have to bring in armoured reinforcements. Yeah, and Kato has a lack of anti-armour on the northern side, but Sean doesn't really have much up there himself either. Kato advancing more further. Advancing more? Advancing more now in this southern side. Advancing further in. And this is what he needed to do right at the start. I mean, he, he butchered Sean's forces early on i was just surprised how he just sat back and uh, i know it's hard you know he lost all of his northern area and he was i think he was all of his micro was going up there in north but i think he needed to uh, try and concentrate on the southern side as well me410 coming in dropping its payload onto the mg42 uh, the dawny is trying to hit that one but there is a lot of flack there's a lot of flack down in this southern side no, southern side in this northern side on Sean's side there's a, still a lot of flat there I wonder if Kato is moving that forward trying to get the off map onto the flat guns back here and this is what Sean does expertly well all of these flat guns are three star because of this commandant in here so uh, yeah Sean really uses his commandant very well to up that his uh, AA pieces and uh, the rest of his troops you know, he has the battery fuel here up there in his Panzergrenz to uh, three stars as well. Sean still has the 1311, courtesy of these two flags here. And, uh, you know, Kato's losing one just because there's absolutely nothing around here. You know, there's an Urzat Strupin holding the other, so he, he can... He can still... You know, he can pick those two flags up very easily. It's just he actually needs to do it. <laughs> the Tiger E, ooh, big shot there. Hitting both of those Urzat Stroop and fall, forcing them to fall back. But this SPW 233 has kind of um, staved off the attack from Kato over the open ground. I mean, beautiful positioning from Sean. I think he, he saw that attack, maneuvered the SPW into a place where it can't get fired on from the ridge lines. Uh, but it does still have line of sight over the open ground. Very nice positioning. The pack 43 engaging the Tiger. Ooh! One shot kill onto that Tiger. And like I said, the AT guns are going to be key for Sean in this game. Off map coming down onto this central town. Looks like Kato is managing to push back in now. Uh, we are 15 minutes in or almost 15 minutes in. So you know Kato's early income advantage is now starting to pay but uh Sean you know 
Oof, just look at the flak. Look at the flak. <laughs> but, um... Oh, yeah, I think the off-map did come down. So, uh, Sean's been moving these units further north. The off-map did come down onto that flak. Um, so, I think one of them has gone down. He has lost one of the AA piece pieces, but three are still in there. Oh, down comes the second off-map. Immediately takes out another one. And uh, Kato's going to push through here. This is an exceptionally, exceptionally good move here. Stumbling over my words. Oh, kills his own. Kills his own transport there, though. Ouch. That will have absolutely hurt him. Sean is rushing an SBW 231s and a Stuck 3G trying to hold this breakthrough. But Kato's finally back to a 12-12. He's picked up this flag here. His Tiger did go down. He's lost this central flag. Like Sean's got no right to hold these two flags here. Down goes the Panzergrenz over open ground so uh those Urzats trooping i think it must have been those Urzats trooping taking them out but yeah wow and just, kato cannot get a hold of his own flags back here just sean's done exceptionally well to hold them and just hold off any pressure from kato megumi.zz we're 15 minutes in it's a 12 12 right now sean's not been under any you know, he's not had any kind of victory tick against him. And you've got to say, it's looking like Sean will will win this one out. Um, just based on the income differences and the way that Sean plays, you've, you've got to pressure him early. You've got to pressure him early. And it's either that or you just go the same kind of income style. You just go balanced income style and you just try and out-trade him. But he is a very good player. I mean, Gonzo in the past has taken sort of a vanguard income and out-traded Sean. So it is possible, you know, it is possible to out-trade Sean. It's just he has a... He's just an exceptionally good player that is very difficult and only the best players in the world could actually do it. I'd actually... I'd be interested if Gonzo and Sean go through the groups. They're actually in different groups. So if they go through into the uh, playoffs, you know, and they come up against each other... I'd be very interested to see, you know, will Gonzo continue his early aggressive playstyles, or will he try and out-trade Sean over the long game? Because it, it might be that that would be the easier task for him. I think balanced income is... Vanguard does counterbalance, but balanced is still, you know, a, a very good income style. Another off-map coming down onto Sean's units. But, um... Kato's northern push kind of has been it has petered out does have a Panzerbusha 41 coming in on an SKK I've said 251 slash 10 with a pack 35 36 on it but Sean's you know he, he's managed to hold off attacks and that's what Sean does really well he kind of uh Players can break through into positions like into this position here, but Sean just stops them going further. He, he's just very good at stopping them going further. In comes an ME410A1, uh, which is heading in to take out the MG42 and just a lack of AA on Kato's side. The Dornio is going to attempt to shoot this thing down, though. With another ME410 taking down the MG40. It's, it's interesting Sean's been targeting these MG42s throughout the game. So clearly, the Dornio does take down the first ME410. Clearly, you know, the MG42s are a particular threat to Sean. You know, Sean has been concentrating on those MG42s. I'm guessing he would extend that to IGs. I don't think pa the 5th uh, Panzer has the IGs. Let's have a look. Because he would have taken them if he did. No. So I think that's why Sean's targeting the MG42s. Because they fulfill a similar, if not the same role, as the IGs or OB25s. You know, the infantry gun support role. Um, so I think that's probably why Sean's, you know, directly targeting them. I thought that Dorney was going to go in for a strafe and roll into the pack 38. He may have done, you know, allocated that attack, but lost sight of it. Oh, big kill onto the Panzer 4H. That pack 38 in a very tight position. Lovely kill. Lovely kill. But Kato has, you know, is starting to push back into this central area. 
the centre town. He's cleared up the flags. He has himself the 13-11. Is now getting the victory tick onto Sean. But can he hold on? I feel like this on the side, Sean looks like he's pushing forwards once again. I don't think Sean... I mean, he's going to get through the... Well, I don't think Sean has quite enough down here right now. Depending on how it plays out between Kato and Sean, it's not guaranteed that Sean will get back into this position. But he's certainly pressing forward forwards for it interesting as, as well that he's not going through this forest he knows that Kato has units in there and I guess he understands that they're going to be CQC units he's now allocating a, a unit of Stoss troop in here which will allow him to uh, fight in the heavy forest so intelligent play there intelligent play uh, bombing strikes coming into the northern side the JU uh, sorry the Dornia 217 has been circling for some time. Another flat gun being brought in. So all of the flat guns did get taken out in the northern side. So Sean is now reinforcing with his anti-air. I'd like to see some anti-air coming out for Kato as well. He is slowly pushing back over the open ground. And actually Sean doesn't have a lot up here. So this is a good position for him to make ground. And I think Kato Megumi.zz will make ground in this center town. Crew kill coming in onto the Tiger E in the north is a tracks broken. A lot of vehicles have been decimated. I think this Pack 40 is just in a fantastic close range position, firing at less than 1,000 meters with its AP shell, and uh, will guarantee it can give itself 145 millimeter penetration at that range. Maybe not quite 145. He's probably looking at 135, 140 millimeters. 135, 130 millimeters, which is more than enough to take out the Tiger E on 125 millimeters of penetration. Interesting, you know, he's had the APCR shells on. He probably used that to gun jam the Tiger E. And then as soon as that gun jam came down, I think he probably switched off the APCR. You know, little tricks of micro the top players use and um, that we all need to learn to uh, improve our games. You know, save that APCR those APCR shells. Kato's Panzergrens have been found and there are a number of attacking infantry units in the northern side. But Kato has made ground in this central area, picked up another flag. He still has the 1311. He's got 28 minutes left on the clock to hold this game. Can he do it? It's going to be difficult, but it's definitely not out of... You know, it's not out the remit of his possibility here. I think Kato has it in him to trade well. He does. He is a very good player. He is a very good player. He has it in him to uh, hold on, but it's going to be mighty, mighty difficult. A hell of a lot of SBWs heading into this central area. And uh, I think Sean's going to use these on anti-infantry duty and is no real light AT. We've got a pack 36 up here. But, you know, as long as Sean sticks to a nice, you know, close by to this lake, it's going to be out of range, so. He's got them in a nice line here. He's got them in a nice line. Interesting, you know, he he kind of defeated the unit he wanted to defeat, and then he's pulled them back again, so he's just saving onto those units. There's something that I don't do very well. I am quite reckless with my units, so uh, we need to learn that one. Pin down the Pioneers. Kato is still advancing. This flag is switching back and forth right now. <laughs> wow. Finally, I think the Battery Fuhrer is, you know, falling back, which is going to allow... Uh, the surrender yeah down goes that that battery fuel and surely kato is going to push him for the surrender i don't think he's noticed um but those pioneers are not left long for this world sean's reinforcing his fallback position in this central town so kato has finally pushed sean out he still has the 1311 now but sean has picked up a flag once again in the south i think he's pushing 
Flammenworth is forwards to potentially scout out what's ahead of him. Ooh, this pack 38, what's it engaging? Is it engaging the half tracks? I think it's got to be, yeah. Crew panic on one of them, but that will let Kato know exactly where that pack 38 is. Ooh, in comes the ME410 strike onto the Tiger. Does not get the kill. Does not get the kill. Oh, and the Dornia looking to try and clear that one up. Finally, in comes some AA. We've got a flak 43, 37 mil on the way. I think the mortar unit has been really helpful for uh, Kato throughout the middle part of this game. Oh, that Dornia. Oh, my days. Just flying into the uh, four flak 20 mils set up once again behind the commandant and uh sean oh picks up the panzer 4 h kill with the me 410 will he fly down onto the tiger he's gonna hit another one down here crew kill gets another kill and uh he's gonna fly all the way south and try and head for this 251 slash 10 as well although he is forced back I think uh, something was hitting him there. Not quite sure exactly what, but he is forced back there. Okay, Sean re-picks up this flag in the central area. We're back to a 12-12 after Sean, I think, picks up this flag in the north as well. And we are obviously 26 minutes into this game. We are into C phase. It's fairly even throughout the, you know, points wise. Sean is slightly ahead of Kato Megumi.zz. And obviously, income wise, this is where Sean has the advantage now. We've reached a 25 minute mark, which I think is the key point where, you know, uh, balanced throughout the rest of the game has more income than Vanguard. Um, so it's 25 minutes when they cross over once again and Sean I imagine is just going to try and use his balanced income to set himself up a fairly decently sized force and then push forwards once again Flammenwerfers all striking into the center I think because this one managed to uh, push through he's bringing in all of his reinforcements now very interesting that Sean held on to those Flammenwerfers from A phase so long. So you get those Flammenwerfers in A phase, but he's not allocated them until C phase. Oh, Sean's Flammenwerf does win out in the Flamer battle, but imagine it is going to die to the MG42 here. I think it's just gone out of line of sight. <laughs> and I think Sean's backed him away back into line of sight unless they're firing on positions further north. Tiger E coming into the central area. And there's a Tiger E very far forward in the uh, main center town. There is a pack 40, you know, trying to push forwards into these. This position here is really good, right? If you can get an AT gun into this position. Because it just can completely fire down this main reinforcement line. You know, this little position right here on the edge of this heavy forest. If we can get it. It won't show me where the heavy, heavy forest is. But yeah, just here. You know, and it can fire down onto this crossroads. And also, you know, if the uh, player on the blue side wants to reinforce this little area here, all of the troops come down this main road and then turn up this crossroads. Whereas this pack 40 will be able to fire on all of those units as well. So you have to manually force them to come down this main road and then allocate them northwards. It's a very tedious... Oh, the Nebelwerfer strike. The Nebelwerfer strike onto the um water half track at the back does pick up the kill and i think he also got a supply truck as well and we've got bombs coming into that area oh hitting the infantry a little bit further north 
Sean uses his command system really well. Look at these northern infantry units all on three star. He's at AA all on three star. His uh, central positions, I think, would be, you know, up vetted, but this Panzer Grand Fury is just pinned down under the weight of the off map. And I think that was a surrender being called there. Didn't think we get the icon anymore. We used we usually get a surrender. I can't imagine that F Sean won that match. Yeah, so it was the surrender. <laughs> I'm sure we used to get a little icon to come up. But yeah, 29 minutes, 47 seconds. Bit of a strange end to that game. But 29 minutes, 47 seconds. Congratulations to Sean. Does pick up the victory against Kato Megumi Zizi. Congratulations, Sean. Commiserations, Kato. Uh, 3,000 kills to 2,300 losses. Uh, 3,500 kills, sorry, to 2,300 losses. So, Sean really traded well. And I think that early northern side just, just completely decimated Kato's approach and I imagine decimated his tactics as well and what he planned to do because that first 10 minutes Kato had the income advantage he had those 150 points 50 point a minute extra 500 points extra total and all of that just just went on reinforcing the northern side let's just see whether that is represented in the chronology so early on uh, a few trades but yeah, I mean, I guess up to the four minute point. Yeah, and then, you know, seven minutes. Sean definitely has the advantage here. It's not really back and forth. So, yeah, until we hit kind of 750, and um, Kato killed what? One, two, three, four, five, six, nine units total. Uh, in the first seven minutes of the game so i think that's what really hurt kato in this matchup let's have a look at the kills for sean sbw233 i think these did a, a great job taking down the 259 and the 251 slash one another one here taking down the 250 slash nine so those sbws did a, a great job at taking down the sdkf sets Pack 38, you know, picking off three SDKF sets. All of these light recon vehicles went down very easily to Sean's units. Pack 38, look at that. Two pounds of four H kills and more SDKF Zed kills. Pack 40, picking up the Tiger E kill. And the Nebel with a 42 at the end, picking up the Flak 40. Wow! That got the Mortar kill, it got the Supply Truck kill, and the Flak 43 kill. Big strike from those Nebel with a 42 rockets. Nice work. Let's just quickly have a look at the kills for Kato Megumi.zz. The Tiger did pick up a Pack 40 kill uh, before itself. I think it was probably this one that then went down to the Reply Pack 40. The Dornier 217 seemed to do a reasonable job kind of holding the skies. The off map, I think, is really where Kato started to push back. Now, this MG42 had a nice time, taking out two of its counterparts and two Urzatz Troopen. Yeah. So, congratulations to Sean, commiserations to Kato Megumi Zizi. I hope you guys enjoyed that match. I did think it was, you know, a good match to display some real top-level play. Kato is a fantastic player. Really love watching him play. And Sean, as always, you know, prob best in the world. Best in the world. Certainly at the moment, he has that title. Uh, winning Steel Division League Season 1. He has the title of best in the world, so we'll have to see how this season goes. Will he, you know, keep that title or will he lose it? Uh, you'll have to keep watching to find out more. I feel like I'm on a 90s TV show. Watch next time to find out what happens next. <laughs> 
Oh, thanks very much for watching those guys. Please let me know as well how the audio was because I did make a, a few changes in this video. I'm trying, I'm still trying my best to get the best audio for you guys possible, but you know, it, it's slow progress, slow, slow progress. One video at a time, I guess. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. And uh, yeah, check out the next one. I'm sure it will be great too.